Today is an incredibly amazing and auspicious day. Lagba Omer, 33rd day in the continuum of time between Pesach and Shavuos. And Lagba Omer, of course, is significant for so many different reasons. On one hand, the Shulchan Aruch tells us, we celebrate a little bit more, perhaps more aptly stated, we dispense with our morning practices, for it was on this day that the 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva stopped dying the plague, which claimed and ravaged much of the Torah community, had come to an end. It's the yard site, the anniversary of the death of Rabbi Shiron Bayochai. And whereas normally on a yard site we're a bit more solemn, normally on a yard site we're a bit more introspective, maybe even a little bit sad. For Bishon Bayochai, his last day of his life was a day in which he imparted so much Torah, so the mystical Torah, hidden dimensions of Torah to his Talmidim. Am Yisrael was enriched on that very day. But the truth is, this Lagba Omer is also a little bit different because it's on this Lagba Omer that we find ourselves marking the yard site of the 45 Kedoshim, the 45 precious souls, the 45 precious Neshamas who were lost to us in the tragedy of Meron last year. 45 precious people, men, children, who went to Meron to connect with Rashbi, to connect with Am Yisrael, to feel a little bit of the Kedusha of the day, but unfortunately lost their lives. A tragedy from which we are still reeling, and I think for many of us, you know, kind of, we pushed it back to the recesses of our mind, but then with the advent of Lagba Omer, all of that searing pain, all of that trauma, all of that tragedy, came bubbling up again. And so the question becomes, what do we do with this? On one hand, I have a day of such great celebration. On one hand, I have a day of such incredible simcha. But on the flip side, I carry with me the pain of the 45 Kiddoshim. I carry with me the pain of those karbonos, of those sacrifices of Am Yisrael. You know, it was interesting that as I was watching the video of the Meiron celebrations last night, something amazing occurred. You know, in Meiron, the primary Medur, the primary bonfire, has for many years been kindled by Rebbes who are descendants of the house of Rijin, of the Rijiner. For the last number of years, I don't know how many years, it's kindled by the Biyan Rebbe. And something amazing happened in Meron yesterday. That before the Rebbe went to kindle the primary bonfire, he stopped and he lit 45 yardside candles. 45 yard side candles, representing, of course, the 45 Kiddoshim, the 45 precious Neshamas. The Alag Ba'omer is not the same. The joy is not the same. It's the, 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 the experience is not the same when you have to go ahead and proceed the kindling of the bonfire with 45 yard side candles. 45. Mem hey. So what should we do? How do we go ahead and on one hand perform our obligation of maximizing this day, the Simcha, but at the same time we're part of Klal Yisrael, so I have to feel the losses of Klal Yisrael as well. How do I combine these two dynamics? And I think there's perhaps an avoda. You know, Moshe Rabbeinu says in Chumash Devarim, he says to Klal Yisrael, Ma Hashem Elokecha Sho'el Mi'imoch it's a famous Pasuk. Moshe Abinu says, what does Hashem ask of you? What does Hashem ask of you? To fear Hashem, to revere Hashem, to love Hashem, to listen to His mitzvahs, to perform everything He asks of you. And you know, the Gemara gets all worked up about this Pasuk. Because the Gemara says, Moshe Rabbeinu, you're making it sound so easy, right? What is God, God does so much for you, which is objectively true. And what does He ask of you? All, all He asks is fear, reverence, love, commitment, behavioral commitment, cognitive commitment, emotional commitment, all kinds of commitment. That's all. That's all. That's a lifetime of work to do all. I understand. That's what Hashem asked. I mean, I understand that I definitely get much more from God than what, than, than what I give Him. There's no question. I get the better end of the deal. But the Gemara is all preoccupied. How can Moshe Rabbeinu seemingly minimize such a Herculean spiritual theological task? And the great Sadiq Rabbi Nachman of Breslov says something amazing. The Rebbe says, you're looking at the Pasuk wrong. Everyone's, everyone's focusing on the end of the Pasuk, the expectations. But the truth is the real expectation. The real expectation is right in the beginning of the Pasuk. Moshe Rabbeinu says to Klal Yisrael, Yisrael 
Ma'ashem Elokech Ashoel Mi'imach. So you see, we translate it as, and now, Klal Yisrael, what does Hashem ask of you? The Rebbe says, no. The way you have to translate it is, Vi'ata is the ask. What does Hashem ask of you? Ma Hashem Elokech Ashoel Mi'imach. What is it that Hashem asks of you? It's Vi'ata. Now. Now. You see, Hashem doesn't ask us to make promises for the future because He knows that we can't. And the truth is, Hashem often doesn't ask us to figure out how to fix the past because often we can't. The only thing Hashem asks of me, the only thing is one word, the Atta. And now, can I maximize my present? Can I make the most of today? Can I accomplish something great? Can I push myself just a little bit more? And however I push myself, can I just become a little bit better? Can I become a little bit more polished? Can I become a little bit more, a little bit holier? Can I become a little bit more luminescent? Can I just maximize my va'ata just the now? That's all. That's all Moshe when it says to Klal Yisrael. Don't get all wrapped up with all the things. God just asks of you one word, va'ata. Maximize the now. And I thought about this. That if you look at the wording of the pas- the pasuk, vi ato Yisrael ma ma Hashem elokher ma is forty five, is forty five, and maybe the aliyah that we could give to their neshamas to the ma, the way to the way to do something for the ma for the forty five, is the ato, is to make the kabbalah, to be a little bit more present, to maximize the time that we have in front of us now. We spend so much time worrying about the future and often many of us spend so much time lamenting the past that we forget that our primary avodah in life is to maximize the present, to make the most of today. What am I going to do today? What am I going to accomplish today? How am I going to become better today? That's my avodah. And perhaps our sacred task on this Lagba Omer is to take upon ourselves a Kabbalah, to take something upon ourselves what could I do to help myself maximize my va'ata? I want to tell you something that I, that I think is incredibly profound that I, I got from a friend of mine. A friend of mine was telling me that the way he's maximizing his time, his va'ata, is he shut off his notifications. So his phone doesn't, you know, bing or, or you know, every time there's a text, a WhatsApp, and an email. He, he, te- he, he checks. He checks all of his forms of communication but he shut off his notification. I thought to myself, so profound. He asked him, why why do you do that? He said, because the truth is I found myself that I was never present. I was never really focused. I'd be involved in something, you know how it is. A text comes in, a WhatsApp comes in. You know, you want to see, you want to see. Is it important, not important? You know, you you want to take a look. And it's impossible to be focused. It's impossible to be rooted. You could take that Kabbalah, not take that Kabbalah. It doesn't matter what, what, what what a person chooses to take is for themselves. But maybe our avoda on this Lagba Omer is just to go ahead and figure out how can I maximize my va'ata? Because dear friends, those kiddoshim, they don't have a va'ata. They don't have another day. They don't have another moment in life. Their lives were cut tragically short. But their legacy could inspire us to maximize ours. So on this Lagba Omer, let us commit ourselves let us find the simcha in the va'ata. Find the simcha in how to maximize the present, the today, and take upon ourselves a kabbalah. Because sometimes just telling yourself you're going to do something is not enough. You have to promise yourself. You have to take something upon yourself. And if we're able to do that, to make a kabbalah, to maximize the ata, then in Mirat Hashem, we should be zochet to give an aliyah to the neshamas of the ma'ah. We should be zochet to give an aliyah to the neshamas of the 45 Kiddoshim. They should find their resting place in Gan Eden Tachaz Kanfei Ashkina. Kaddish Baruch Hu should give a refuah to those who are still suffering from injuries from that tragic event last year. Hashem should give Nechama to the families still struggling and coping with loss. And most of all, we should be zochet that as we find ourselves in the shine of the bonfires of Lagba Omer, we should be zochet to bask in the great light of Mashiach Mihirabi Amenu Amen.